Hello, welcome to your first flip lesson. We are starting out in what should make sense, Unit 1. We call this Lesson A, and it deals with rounding. Okay. Uh, at the end of this, this uh, video, you should be able to say that, yes, I can round my solution appropriately within the context of a problem. Your key terms. Now, I don't have definitions for these terms, but we've got to understand how the, the uh, number system works here. We have our decimal point, and to the left are all the regular whole numbers, you know, the ones place, the tens place, the hundredths, and so on. To the right is the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. Notice again, as I'm sure you're well aware, the TH at the end of that signifies that you're to the right of the decimal point. All right? When it comes to rounding, it's a very simple process. Uh, first, we want to identify and underline where you want to stop. All right, we're going to look at the digit to the right of that. All right, if it's four or smaller, we're going to the underlying number is not going to change. If it's five or bigger, we're going to move up to the next number. Uh, there's a little mention here about carrying the one. We'll talk about that in our example in a minute. All right. So first off, I'm asked to round to the ten spot. All right, which is right there. It's the three. Let me switch over. Sorry. All right, is right here. It's the three, okay? And the four, the number directly to the right of it, all right, is four or smaller, so this underlying number is not going to change. So our answer is 12 and 3 tenths. All right, looking at the next one, we're asked to round to the hundredths. So when I look there, all right, here's the hundredths place. The six is bigger than, is, is five or bigger, so we're going to bump that seven up. So we're going to have 25 and 98 hundredths. All right. And then there's one more here. We're asked to round to the whole number. All right. That's the same as saying round to the one spot. Ooh, my dot's a little bit off there. Sorry. All right. So what we're doing is we're looking at this number, and then the 5 will tell that to move up to a 10. Now, this is where I told you we'll come back to this. If, you, if you're rounding a 9 up, you have to carry the 1 from the 10 to the next column. So 9 goes up to 10, which means we write our 0 here and we carry a 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, and there's nothing else to carry, so we're just going to write our number, 1,230. Okay? Uh, on the page here, you see problems. We call them you try problems. Do not do these with the video. We'll do them in class tomorrow. Let's move on to example 2. All right? We have Mike here. Mike is going shopping, all right, uh, for back to school clothes, something I'm sure you did, all right. We find out that at Kohl's he's going to spend $33.46, and at the mall it's $45.45, all right. To the nearest dollar, we're asked to estimate how much Mike spent. And this is usually how you talk. When you go shopping, you don't say, well, I spent $37.14. Usually you say, well, I spent $37. Or you may even round it up to the 10 spot, like 40 bucks or something like that. All right, we're asked to the nearest dollar here. All right, so first of all, let's figure out how much he actually spent. All right, real simple addition here, lining up my decimal points. All right, so carry my one. There's nine, eight, seven. He spent $78.91. So if you ask him how much he spent, he might say, well, I spent $79. That's rounded to the nearest dollar. He might say I spent 80. That would be rounded to the 10 spot. Okay, it all depends on what you're asked. All right. So there's another you try problem on the back of your page. All right, again, leave this for class time. Let's move on to our last example. All right, we're asked to use the formula I equals PRT, all right, to help solve these problems. I stands for interest, P is principal, R is rate, T is time, all right? So when we look at this, we have Jim invested $105 in the CD for one year at 10% interest, all right? At the end of the year, Jim's bank statement read $116. Explain the error the bank made. Now, this is a big deal. Explain the error the bank made. Don't just say a number. That's not what they're, we're looking for here. All right, so first of all, let's figure out what the mistake actually is. So let's do the calculation. P stands for principal. That's the amount invested. This is the P. Rate stands for the percent, the interest, all right? as a decimal, so 0 0.10, and then t is time in years, one year. All right, so when you end up doing that, you multiply them all together, you get $10.50, okay? That's how much interest he earned, all right, which means how much total money he has 
You take its principal, you add back the interest earned, and we are looking at $115.50. So when I look at these two numbers, okay, what his bank statement said and what, it, what his actual number should be, it looks to me like the bank rounded up, okay? So we'll say the bank rounded it to the whole number instead of to the penny. Alright, anytime you talk about money, you're going to talk about rounding to the nearest hundredth because that's where the penny spot is. Okay, now there's a different way you could say it. You could have said, you know, the bank rounded to the whole number instead of rounding to the nearest hundredth. Okay, uh, so there's different ways of looking at it, but you have to have something that explains the error that was made. All right, so you can't just say the bank rounded it wrong. Okay, that doesn't actually explain what the error is. Okay, so we got to make sure we, we correctly state that when we go. More, the more detail, the better when you're writing explanations. Okay. So our actual answer is right here to the problem. This is the work that helped us get to that answer. All right, so here's another you try problem that you'll take care of in class. And finally, the last thing tonight, all right, on every video, you're going to be asked these uh, following things here. After watching this video, I can. You're actually going to write out what you can do now. Do you know how to round? Okay. Uh, do you know how to use the interest formula? Whatever. Okay. And then the second one, now, you may not need this one on this one because this is and the first lesson is kind of easy, all right. But after watching this video, I still don't know how to. If there's something you don't know how to do, well, then write it down, and then come down to here and say, okay, to help myself, I'm going to do this. Rewatch the video that may help you here. Ask a friend, ask a question in class. Go to Math Resource Center, all right. Um, search a topic on the internet. Do something else to make sure you learn it. If there's ever something you don't know, it's your requirement to go ahead and do something else to figure out that uh, which you don't know. All right, we'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye.